Hey, it's the Thursday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. It was a much better day today, and if you like today, you're really going to like Friday. Before we get to the increasingly hot early September forecast, let's talk about the eclipse next April. Why are we talking about this now? Well, the reason we're talking about this now is because over the next few days, the sun's path through the sky will be very, very similar to the path it takes in early April, right around the time of the total eclipse, the total solar eclipse, the path of totality passing over parts of uh, northern Ohio and western PA, including in our TV viewing area. And so it'll be a good idea over the next few days, around mid-afternoon, to check out where the sun is in your sky. If you're planning on trying to see the eclipse from certain locations, whether it be your house or your workplace or anything like that, look to see where the sun is around the time of the day that the eclipse will be. And for our area, that uh, will be mid-afternoon. The maximum eclipse occurring about 3.15, but the partial eclipse will start as early as 2. And so check it out. See where the sun is in the sky. If the sun is blocked by a building or some trees or something like that, you're going to have to find someone somewhere else to check out the eclipse on April the 8th. But again, the sun angle, the sun's path through the sky over the next handful of days will be very similar to what we can expect in early April. So do a little dry run, if you will, to get set for that monumental event next April, weather permitting, of course. <laughs> uh, clouds in April, uh, definitely more of a problem than clouds in the summer season. Uh, so hopefully our luck uh, is with us uh, in early April and we get a nice view of that kind of once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. In the meantime, uh, we're wrapping up August tonight. We're wrapping up meteorological summer, the months of June, July, and August. Temperature-wise, it was a pretty ho-hum summer. We're going to finish about 0.2 degrees cooler than the average at the Youngstown Warren Airport. Rainfall-wise, pretty ho-hum. Now, it started dry. We had a dry late spring, dry early summer, but the second half of summer has been considerably wetter. At the airport, we're going to finish around 0.16 above the average. Very, very close to the average in terms of temperatures and precipitation, but this will be our coolest summer in quite some time. Pretty close to the summer we had in 2017, and uh, we had uh, a triplet of cool summers, 2013, 14, and 15, but warm summers, summers that is, compared to the average, have been the rule ever since. So yeah, not all that warm this summer, and that's basically what our forecast was. It was uh, all along going to be kind of a an uneventful summer temperature-wise, and that has indeed come to fruition. In terms of local rain gauges across the area for the summer season, some of the uh, higher totals, 16, 17, 18 inches, especially down here closer to uh, Glenmore, Calcutta, the East Liverpool area, that's one of the wetter spots for the summer season. Another fairly wet spot up here across central parts of Trumbull County. Some of the drier areas in our eastern area is a little bit closer to Grove City and Slippery Rock rainfall totals for the summer season, closer to 10 inches over there. But generally speaking, as a region-wide average, about 14, 15 inches of rain over the last few months. August specifically has been quite a bit wetter than the average in much of our area. Here's a look at some of those same locations for rain totals in the month of August. And rain totals have been highest kind of along the Route 30 corridor down in Columbiana County and out into parts of uh, Stark County as well. Incidentally, Stark County was one of the driest areas earlier in the summer, so they really flipped the switch um, from early summer to late summer. Some of the drier areas in August going along with the idea for the whole summer are northern and eastern areas were not quite as wet as some of our central and southern and western areas during the month of August. We're flipping the calendar into September, and no surprise with today's outlook, uh, updated outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, most of the country from around the Rockies on east expected to have a pretty warm September compared to the average. Their initial outlook put out about 12 or 13 days ago was kind of neutral looking in our area, and I mentioned on Weather Geeks that day that I was skeptical of that being kind of a conservative outlook for us. A lot of the analogs in a an emerging El Nino that's pretty stout, uh, a warm September is no big surprise in a, uh, a, a setup like we have right now. Now, Oftentimes it flips really fast in October, and we have a chilly, compared to average, couple of months in October and November before meteorological winter. So we'll see if that happens this year. But yeah, odds are pretty strongly favoring at this point a, a warm September, especially the first week to 10 days of the month. Going along with that idea, not expecting a, a very wet September locally. So compared to August, it should be quite a bit drier than August. And compared to the average, it should be quite a bit warmer than August as well, even though our long-term averages, of course, drop 
in the month of September pretty steeply from now through the end of the month. We'll blitz through Futurecast because there's nothing to show you over the next few days other than this warm front approaching and passing through the area over the weekend. It'll be accompanied by a few fair weather clouds Saturday, but we're back to bright sunshine by Sunday. And with the return flow around high pressure, here comes the warmth. We'll be flirting with 90 by the end of the weekend and into Labor Day. In fact, we'll be flirting with records a few times next week, specifically Monday and Wednesday. I don't have Thursday on here, but next Thursday we could also be flirting with a record high uh, with temperatures close to 90. Our best chance of tying a record at this point is going to be Wednesday. That uh, is a little bit lower hanging fruit as far as the, uh, the record set in 1954, 93 degrees. Don't forget to uh, come visit us at the uh, WFMJ tent at the Canfield Fair. I'll be there with Madison and Aaron and Dana this weekend from 10 to 2 on Saturday and 2 to 6 on Sunday. Uh, you can catch Andrew DiPaolo at the fair in the uh, tent on Friday from 10 to 2, and Jimmy Wendelek will be there from 2 to 6. And then on Labor Day Monday, Chris Serenelli will be uh, greeting everyone in the tent from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. But again, myself, I'll be there this weekend, 10 to 2 Saturday, 2 to 6 on Sunday. Hope to see many of you weather geeks there. Always a good time to uh, connect with the viewers at the Canfield Fair. Stop by, say hi, get an autograph, get a picture. Talk to us about weather or anything else that's on your mind. And believe me, I've been doing the Canfield Fair for long enough now that people will tell us exactly what is on their mind. That is for sure at the Canfield Fair. So always an interesting time. But all in all, it's always a great time. Looking forward to it. And looking forward to a bright and sunny weekend. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. I'll see you back here on Labor Day coming up on Monday.